Time now for the morning rush. Evacuation warnings have been scaled back in more communities around the Hermit's Peak Calf Canyon fire. Residents in Angel Fire, Black Lake and nearby areas have been downgraded from the ready, set, go system to normal status. That fire, the largest in recorded state history, has now burned close to 316,000 acres and is 54% contained. FEMA sending out a call to anyone who's been affected by the Hermit's Peak Calf Canyon fire or even those who've not lost their home. Right now, $2.3 million have been approved, but they only have 790 applicants. Red Cross says they simply believe people don't know they're eligible for the money and encourage them to apply for help. Meanwhile, the Black Fire in the Gila grew another 8,000 acres over the last day. That is now up to 258,000 total acres burned. And that remains the third largest wildfire in New Mexico history after the current Hermit's Peak Calf Canyon fire and the Whitewater Baldy fire from 2012. Containment sits at 25%. Erica. And here's a look at our school day forecast. Temperatures are slightly cool for the kiddos. You may need a light sweater. By this afternoon, we're going to be warm with a chance for some afternoon thunderstorms. The accused shooter of a man who was gunned down at his son's graduation party in Tucumcari is expected back in court tomorrow. Police say 46-year-old Michael Adiano and Taj Garrett were drinking and started arguing after they both left. A witness saw Garrett park in front of Adiano and heard six gunshots and saw Adiano fall to the ground. Garrett was later booked on a first-degree murder charge. This morning, we are waiting for an update from APD on a shooting near San Mateo and Catherine. Now, last night, officers told us that two people were taken to UNM Hospital. Their conditions are still not known as of this morning, but we will, of course, continue following the very latest for you and bring it to you both on air and online. This morning, police are asking witnesses to the deadly shooting of a teen girl to come forward. Police say 13-year-old Alexis Miller was riding in the backseat of a car on March 28th near I-25 in Cesaro Chavez. APD has not said what led up to the shooting or who was driving. They're asking anyone with information to call police. We are still waiting to learn the identities of two teens accused of making threats against a school. Albuquerque police were called to Kennedy Middle School on Tuesday. They say that the teens made a threat to a faculty member over a gaming platform. Officers said a 13-year-old and a 14-year-old were arrested and then charged with making a threat to terrify, intimidate, and interfere. Erica. And here's a look at our threat index. It is moderate to high today. We are going to see a threat for severe weather across the east side of the state and a chance for showers and some gusty winds in the metro this afternoon. A grand jury has charged the 18-year-old accused of fatally shooting 10 black people at a Buffalo supermarket. Peyton Gendron faces several charges, including domestic terrorism motivated by hate and 10 counts of first-degree murder. Four people are dead this morning, as well as the suspected gunman after a mass shooting at a medical office building in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Police say that the suspect killed at least four of those people before dying of an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. Investigators say the man was carrying a handgun along with a rifle and appeared to use both weapons during the attack. Today, a U.S. House committee is holding a hearing on gun legislation. The House Judiciary Committee will meet to discuss a bill that would raise the age limit for purchasing a semi-automatic center rifle from 18 to 21. The bill would make it a federal offense to have or to create large capacity magazines and would create a grant program to buy back such magazines. Erica. And here's a look at the traffic maps. They're looking clear, no accidents or slowdowns this morning. And Tracker is currently going south on I-25 near Comanche, and everything's moving right along. Well, it was quite the heartwarming reunion that took place in San Diego when a Ukrainian refugee was reunited with her dog. The unnamed woman who fled the violence in Ukraine claimed her Pomeranian at the San Diego Humane Society. Now, she had made her way into the U.S. from Mexico, but her companion had to be kept under quarantine for about 28 days. Mm. Time now for the five facts. And number five, an indigenous artist whose work features Dene female superheroes is being showcased in Albuquerque. Sean Vajali has merged his love for art with his love of comic books. He now creates his own comic book characters that feature strong Native women. His work has been shown throughout the U.S. and Canada. It will now be showcased in the Testament of Empowerment exhibit, which opens today at the Indian Pueblo Cultural Center. At number four, the Department of Transportation is refixing a busy intersection that they had just fixed. In October, the DOT installed merge barriers to help cars and bicycles share the road. This is at the east end of Paseo del Norte, where it meets with tramway. But drivers turning right onto tramway said it put them at risk of being rear-ended. Now, the DOT will install a traffic signal that will make the drivers come to a complete stop, but still be able to make the right turn on red. The DOT says that the signal should be up and running within a day or so. And at number three, we'll see some showers and storms for the Rio Grande Valley and eastern New Mexico. Those will start popping up after 2 p.m. and will push east through the overnight hours. And number two, some positive news this morning from the Hermit's Peak Calf Canyon fire. Evacuation warnings are being dialed back in more communities around that complex fire. 
Texas after it saw almost no growth in recent days and is now 54% contained. Residents in Angel Fire, Black Lake and nearby areas have been downgraded from the Ready, Set, Go system to now normal status. Officials say that it's a testament to the hard work at the line with the firefighters in the area. Well, this fire, the largest in state recorded history, has now burned close to 316,000 acres. Finally, number one for you this hour, FEMA sending out a call to anyone who's been affected by the Hermit's Peak Cap Canyon fire, even those who have not lost their home. Right now, $2.3 million have been approved, but they only have had 790 applicants, which is concerning, especially considering the number of people, 27,000 people, who've been evacuated in some form. Here are some of the reasons you could get help. Rental assistance, lodging expenses while being displaced, or money needed for home repairs.